is Alina Eisenhower from the Sweet Kitchen and Bar. Alina, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, you know, you you have you're an entrepreneur. You are an artist, a creative. Uh, Sweet uh, Bar and Kitchen has grown. Uh, maybe you could just share with our viewers how you got into the the food industry, and uh, uh, then we'll get into where it's taken you. I guess uh, how I got into it, it started really when I was a kid. I always um, loved to be in the kitchen and cooking, and I had my first restaurant job when I was 13. I grew up out in the Berkshires, and food's a big part of, mm -hmm. you know, it's a tourist area, so having a job in a kitchen is probably everybody's first job yeah. <laughs> who grew up out there. Um, when I graduated high school, being a chef and the whole culinary industry wasn't what it is now. It's before Food Network and Chef Celebrity and all of that. So I didn't go into it for a career. I went away to college at Northeastern and had another career. And then I got pregnant with my son. And I think that makes you kind of sometimes reevaluate things. And I mm -hmm. thought about what I really loved to do and what I wanted to do. And that kind of brought me back to the kitchen. And so when you, you know, brought you back to the kitchen, um, you know, one of the things that we really work hard at the chamber, uh, you know, with a lot of our partners is, how do you encourage more people to pursue that passion if they've got an idea or, or a vocation to not be afraid to explore starting a business? I mean, how did you go about doing that and what was kind of your, your mindset? I think part of it, I had an advantage and I think if you look at a lot of entrepreneurs, they come from entrepreneurial families. I grew up with my father, had his own business and I think if you're around that, it's kind of all you know. I'd imagine it's much scarier for people who are, mm -hmm. have always kind of followed a more corporate path or worked for other people. But I think you just, you just do it. <laughs> you just leap. I mean, um, it's something that I love to do, and you know that it's an old saying, but if you do something that you love, you never work a day in your life, and it's true. If you're following something that you really believe in and you're passionate about, um, and you're trying to do it to the best of your ability, you'll be successful. It's just a matter of really believing in it and taking the kind of first step of that leap of faith. So, so the, the the Berkshires, the Golden West, uh, uh, their loss, Worcester Central Mass's gain, having you here, uh, you, you know, on Shrewsbury Street, you have a couple different locations. Uh, that growth process, how have you managed that? Um, it, all in all, Worcester has actually been a really great city to have a business in. It's not the first place that I've had a business, but um, I started with a really small spot. It was all I could afford at the time. Mm -hmm. I um, was, you know, by myself, investing everything I owned in it and started in a small spot and then grew and actually with help from the city and um, programs for job creation and tapping into all of that, I was able two years ago to move into a bigger location, which has been amazing. It's There's been a, great because cool. I have, yeah, it's a beautiful building. It's a great part of Shrewsbury Street. I actually have parking now, which, was <laughs> a, which is a huge, huge problem at the other end of the street. So. Um, Overall, it's been good. I think there's been a lot of just what I've seen change in Worcester since I've been here. I mean, I've only been in Worcester for seven years, mm -hmm. and the amount of change that's happened and where the city's going and the amount of um, business that's coming here and businesses supporting each other has been really amazing. There's no doubt a lot of momentum, and sometimes yeah. it's those outside eyes like yours that better appreciates that. Uh, sometimes people yeah. who have uh, never left Worcester don't always uh, maybe appreciate uh, how much progress uh, you know has been made, and Shrewsbury Street is been an engine in that regard and entrepreneurs like you driving that. Uh, let me just ask you though, uh, you, you alluded to it, you know, when you started in the, in, the, in the business and even just going back in your family, are you surprised at how the whole, I don't know, foodie culture, I don't know how to say it but uh, properly, but you, TV networks dedicated 24-7 to, to food, restaurants, uh, does that surprise you? I don't know that it surprises me. Um, I think everything, food is something because it's beautiful and artistic and it's something that connects everybody. Every culture, every person, no matter what your ethnicity, your um, stature, where you came from, enjoys food, is involved in food, is in their everyday life, has traditions based around it. So it's something that everyone's interested in. And I think with probably the best thing that ever happened to our industry was all of the first food network and then what's grown out of that because I think it's something so many people identify with and once something is, for better or for worse, we're a pop culture country and once something is on TV it validates it to a certain extent. I mean I've seen it with myself is the difference in you know people, some people think that it's dumbed it down or whatever else. I think it's the best thing that could happen whether or not you agree with all the programming and the things that they do, it's made our industry something that people look up to. People want to meet a chef, kids want to be a chef, people want to cook again. And that's, you know, we couldn't ask for anything more than that. Right, and you've been on uh, 
Just sh some of the TV shows you've been on, the Food Network, what, what, uh... Um, a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been on Chopped, um, Cupcake, Cupcake Wars, Wars, right? Beat Bobby Flay, Sweet Genius, and Rewrapped, yep. And, and all of those have been, uh, great exposure and just awareness about... Yeah, the... some were more fun than others. Yeah. It's TV, you know. Yeah. Um, some were a lot of fun and some were a lot of work and not so much fun. But all of them have been amazing for business. And I think, again, because we're such a pop culture country, just the fact that you were on TV, right or wrong, um, somehow makes people see you differently. It makes people more interested and want to you know, know more about you or see what you're doing. And if somebody was living under a rock for the last uh, few years and was not aware of Sweet Kitchen and Bar, uh, how did they... Uh, Get in touch, visit, address. Uh, what do you want to say about the, so, about the business? Um, Sweet Kitchen and Bar is located on Shrewsbury Street, 72 Shrewsbury Street, in the old Edward Buick building next to Voltorno Pizza. And we're a full service um, restaurant and bar. Our food is, I guess, what you would classify as New American. And then we have also a full bakery and pastry shop because I really started as a pastry chef. So that's something that's mm -hmm. kind of always been, I love sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, you know, we do a big brunch business, dinner, dessert, all of the above. <laughs> and uh, we have a, we're very excited at the Chamber to have a business after hours uh, uh, at your place. Yeah, this month. I'm very excited for yeah. that. And it looks like we're going to have a really good crowd, too. And uh, in the advertising that we shared with our members, there was a great uh, picture of, a, of is it your, a cookbook your mom gave you? Yes. That you have so my, with well, us. Actually, uh, my grandmother, when I was, I really first started in restaurants when I was about, 13. Um, my neighbors owned one, so I wasn't quite legal yet. And I was kind of working in the kitchen. And my grandmother gave me a journal. It was a blank journal, but it was a cook's notebook. And it had all these great quotes about food on every page, and it was blank. So I just started writing all my recipes in it. So it has recipes going back to when I was 13 or 14. And then not everything, you know, scattered right. throughout the years and some things my mom added to it. And yeah. And I'm sure some recipes you still use, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, Alina, we appreciate it. We encourage our viewers or anyone who's uh, interested in, in some great uh, food, a uh, uh, drink, uh, but uh, lots of pastries, great pastries and desserts, to please visit Sweet Kitchen and Bar. And, and Alina, just excited to have you uh, on the show and look Thank forward you. to uh, having our members, uh, probably 120 or so yeah. anyway, come down and uh, experience everything at Sweet Kitchen and Bar.